Hi students, we have to learn about bridges. Okay, so what is the purpose of bridge? Maybe bridge is nothing but a. It is so cute, and it can be used for to measure the like unknown resistance, inductance, capacitance, impedance, and admittance. Okay. <coughs> Here a simplest form of bridge circuits consist of a network of four resistance arm. Okay. And uh, these four arms forming a closed circuit. Okay. This bridge is nothing but it is a closed circuit and it consists of four resistance arm. Okay. It consists of four resistance arm. Like what what is this shape means? Right. Okay. You can take a resistance. Oh, four resistance okay you can take four resistance and you can uh, connect a galvanometer inside of any two arms okay and you can connect another opposite two arms you have to connect the <coughs> voltage source okay you can connect any voltage source across another uh, two arms so this is a simple structure of bridges okay and a supply source is applied to the opposite junction and a current detector was connected to the other two junctions so here i already mentioned that you can connect the supply voltage of opposite uh, junction okay maybe you can take this point mean and the opposite uh, junction is this point okay can't able to connect here okay and remaining two ends of the uh, on bridge arm to be connected uh, like a current detector okay like a galvanometer so this is a simple structure of bridge and what is the main advantage okay why we have to go for the bridge circuit mean so it is a very high accuracy okay and what is the uh, purpose of bridge so we have to measure the unknown uh, resistance capacitance inductance and admittance impedance okay everything and uh, major advantage is the bridge circuit is very high accuracy compared to some conventional method and balanced equation is independent okay balanced equation is independent to each other because independent to each arm and the interchange of source <coughs> and detector does not affect the balance condition okay when the circuit is balanced that means balanced means uh, because it is a one loop and this is a one loop both loop having the current of same value means the circuit is balanced condition okay so in the balanced condition the source and detector does not affect balance condition here the source is nothing but voltage source and detector is nothing but any galvanometer or maybe we have to connect any uh, resistance also okay no problem and both are uh, maybe the interchange of source and detector okay during the balanced condition we can interchange the source and uh, detector should be interchange is possible okay and th without affecting the balance condition and the bridge circuits also used as a control circuits okay it is also used for control circuit for some uh, specific applications okay and what are the types of bridge circuit is available means there is a dc bridges and ac bridges are there and in our syllabus dc bridges uh, having three types, okay, three classification only. We have to study it. That means a uh, Wheatstone bridge, Wheatstone bridge, and uh, second one is Kelvin's bridge, and third one is uh, Kelvin's double bridge. Kelvin bridge and Kelvin double bridge. That, means that is represented by KD. It is Kelvin's double bridge, and first one is Wheatstone bridge. Okay, Wheatstone. Kelvin and Kelvin double bridge and AC bridge it is classified into another uh, some three uh, three types okay and <coughs> in our syllabus okay it is a in practical uh, there are more, more types are there but in our syllabus three types of uh, DC as well as AC bridges are there okay uh, Maxwell's inductant bridge Maxwell's Inductance and Maxwell capacitance bridge. Uh, first one is Maxwell bridge, and second one is Anderson bridge. Anderson bridge, 
and third one is shearing bridge shearing bridge so these three bridges only available in our syllabus so in we will discuss in later uh, these three bridges in ac and now we have to classify the dg dc bridges these bridges are mainly used for to measurement of resistance okay so mostly dc bridges all the dc bridges like uh, wheatstone and kelvin and kelvin double bridge everything to be used for to measure the unknown resistance okay maybe a very smallest resistance to very huge resistance okay uh, wheatstone bridge is used for only to measure the uh, low resistance okay and kelvin double bridge a uh, kelvin bridge also used to measure the low resistance and some different techniques okay we can change the different techniques and it should be used for some accuracy level is higher than the wheatstone bridge and kelvin double bridge is used for to measure the huge resistance okay high resistance value okay so first we have to discuss about first we have to discuss about wheatstone bridge okay wheatstone bridge is a measurement of unknown resistance okay to measure unknown resistance with a low value okay so the very important device is used to measurement of medium resistance okay medium resistance or a low resistance using bridge circuit okay wheatstone bridge circuit and uh, very important uh, device because uh, wheatstone bridge is a very important device that is used for measurement of medium resistance as as well as low resistance okay low resistance value and the uh, wheatstone bridge has been uh, has been uh, in use of longer than almost any electrical measuring instrument okay and it is still accurate and reliable instrument and is extensively used in industry so it is used for industries so industry application for measuring the uh, accurate and reliable value okay reliable value for unknown resistance okay and the wheatson bridge is an uh, instrument for making a comparison measurements and operates upon a null indication principle so mostly all the bridges like a null indication principle because uh, when the circuit is balanced the current indicating meter okay, that is a gamma meter or uh, uh, it will show the zero value that means null value okay so when the circuit is balanced so the gamma meter indicates zero value so at the time the circuit is balanced so we have to measure the unknown resistance value and this means the indication is independent of the calibration of the null indicating instrument or any of its characteristics so the indication of uh, independent of the calibration of null indicating instrument or any of its characteristics so before going to the measure the value through galvanometer the galvanometer should be calibrated by uh, some reference instrument and we can put the galvanometer in the circuit that's the basic steps okay and uh, for this reason very high degree of accuracy can be achieved by using wheatstone bridge so we have to using a proper instrument to measure the high accuracy uh, we have to measure the resistance value in very high accuracy the accuracy of uh, the wheatstone bridge is 0.1 percentage is quite common with with the wheatstone bridge as a opposed to accuracies of 3% to 5 percentage with ordinary ohm meter or some other measurement okay so the normal conventional method compared to normal conventional method so the wheatstone bridge having huge accuracy rate okay because we are using a calibrated instrument like galvanometer and we are using proper resistance arm with the uh, exact value of resistance arm so then only we have to get the exact result of the wheatstone bridge okay so here we can show the a bridge circuit so here we can connect the resistance r1 and r2 r3 and r4 it should be both are uh, combined like a short circuit or should be a like, closed closed loop and we can connect the two ends of the resistance arm like here a and b is our own resistance arm that means standard arm so uh, <coughs> a and uh, b is called a standard arm and maybe the r3 and r4 resistance are standard arm 
and R1 and R2 these two resins have a ratio arm and here standard arm so both uh, arms should be connected to the voltage source and remaining two ends of the bridges should be connected to the galvanometer okay so here these circuit will be uh, I will draw the elaborated circuit so here is a R2 and this is R4 and here R3 and this is R4 okay you can connect connect it here and in between we have to connect the galvanometer okay so galvanometer should be connected across the these three value and that means here is a here is R because R1 oh, okay okay it is R2 and this is R4 this is R2 this is R4 and this is R1 and this is R3 and we can connect the voltage source across the these two point R1 and R2 so you connect the voltage source across this point so the same circuit will be redraw by myself for easily can easily you can understand understanding purpose okay maybe it is in the form of a diagonal shape it's, it is a form of rectangular shape that's also remaining everything to be same because you can understand easily in that form okay so here uh, the current i1 and i2 will be flowing through the two uh, arms okay here can current is here can go for uh, uh, two current will be flowing there here current i1 and here i2 so here the two currents will be flowing through the two arms okay when the galvanometer okay when the galvanometer gets because it is a one loop and this is another loop both loops are uh, getting a uh, same current means because it should be going for because some, just you have to take example here 2 ampere would be flowing through the galvanometer and this uh, loop also going to it should be because it will be flowing here okay it should be also flowing through amp both uh, current will be opposed to each other because it should be flowing clockwise and this also clockwise so it is come top to bottom here bottom to top so both are opposed to each other so here both are loop having same current so the total current will be zero because it is opposed to each other the galvanometer pointer that means pointer will not move on any side so at the time the circuit is a balanced condition okay here we can take a maybe when the circuit is balanced means so we can take a resistance value of some example i will put some resistance value here it is a 2 ohm here is a 2 ohm and here this resistance value is 10 ohm and here <coughs> here also i am taking um, 1 ohm here I will take this is a 2 ohm resistance. So here is a I will take a 2 ohm resistance. So here R1 is 1 ohm and R3 is a 2 ohm. Here R2 is a 2 ohm. Here R4 is a 5, 10 ohm. So just we can consider that this is a 1 because this is a 1, 1, 1 east. It is 5, 5 times higher than the resistance. Okay, here is a 2 ohm. It is a 10 ohm. So here 1 east. Maybe I uh, can take this is a 5 ohm. It is a 5 ohm resistance and it is a 10 ohm resistance. Okay, so here it is a 2 times higher than. So it is 1 is to 2. This is a, this 2 resistance are 1 is to 2 ratio. And you can take this also. Here 1, uh, one, one ohm. Here is a one ohm, 2 ohm resistance. So here also 1 is to 2 ratio. So the resistance values differ but the ratio of the circuit or the ratio of the loop is same here 1 is to 2 here 1 is to 2 so here 
I'm taking the voltage source, maybe a 9 voltage, 9 voltage source. Maybe I, I will take a 9 voltage, it's a voltage source. So here some voltage drop will be occur. Okay, here that means uh, X voltage will be occur means here two times voltage drop occur here. Okay, so here two X voltage drop will be occur. That means one is two. So the resistance value is one is two. So here X is the voltage drop will be occurred between the resistance two and here the maybe here the value of two. Okay, the ratio is two. So here X means here. 2x is the ratio. So maybe here uh, 3 voltage will be dropped here means in that resistance R2. So here R4 into double okay multiple multiply by 2. So here 6x okay here already 9 volt is there and 3 voltage will be dropped here and remaining 6 voltage will be dropped across the resistance here. The same uh, same uh, uh, the same will be happen here. So here this resistance R1 having the value of uh, 3 voltage will be dropped here and remaining 6 voltage will be dropped here because it is also 1 is to 2 ratio. So when this voltage will be uh, both uh, voltage drop will be uh, both across this resistance arm. So there is no because the current flowing through the circuit also same. Because here when the current will be flowing through the resistance, same current will be flowing through the this arm only. So when the both current flowing through the arm will be same, here the same current flow will be the uh, two uh, loops. So the galvanometer points uh, represent null indication. So there is no current flowing through the circuit. So that is a balanced condition. So here we have to mention the construction of the circuit here the basic circuit of its own bridge is shown in above figure it consists of four resistance arm R1, R2, R3 and R4 to be connected across the battery voltage V and other two terminals of its own bridge is connected across the null indicator usually as a galvanometer. so the, this is the construction of the circuit here depending upon the potential difference between the points CD and the current flowing through the galvanometer. So here can take a C and D point. There is any potential difference is occurred. Potential difference means the voltage drop across this loop and the potential difference across this loop is deferred means the current will be flowing through the circuit. Okay. So otherwise the current will not flowing through the circuit. So the current is zero at the time the bridge is a balanced one. So the balanced condition is achieved when there is no current flows through the galvanometer or potential difference across the galvanometer is zero. So that is the rules. Okay. This balanced condition is achieved during the voltage from the point BC equal equals the voltage point B and D. And here BC and BD both voltage are same that means that the voltage uh, uh, is same across the two arms okay is equal the galvanometer represent there is no current flowing through the galvanometer and in another way the balance condition is achieved during the point a a to c okay a to c a to d a to c or a to d so here also the both voltage will be equal so when the both voltage to be equal so there is no current flowing through the galvanometer so here the bridge is said to be balanced during the potential difference between the point c d are equal so here we have to write the equation using a, like a uh, ohms law according to ohms law i1 r1 equal to i2 r2 so go for that and wait i will erase that So here the current is flowing through the I1 R1 okay, because at a balanced condition AC voltage drop across AC and the AD equal to both are equal. So here uh, I will take a voltage across the R1 this element and this element. So V equal to I into R okay, according to Ohm's law V equal to I into R is the formula. So here I1 R1 and I2 R2 so both are equal. 
when the circuit is balanced. So here I have to write the equation I1 R1 equal to I2 R2. If the galvanometer current is zero, the current values becomes I1 equal to I3 equal to V by R1 plus R3. Because the current flowing through the circuit, okay, current flowing through the circuit, uh, our galvanometer is zero means. So current flowing through the so galvanometer, okay, is zero means here the same current will be flowing through the I1, I3. So both are equal. So I1 equal to I3 and uh, maybe in the same formula will be rearranged here i equal to i equal to v by r so here i1 is equal to i3 so here v by here r1 plus reason r1 and r3 both are uh, seriously connected so we have to add the resistance value r1 plus r3 so just come to here i1 equal to i3 because uh, there is no current flowing through the galvanometer so i1 is equal to i3 so uh, both uh, value of i equal to according to ohm's law v by r so here v is nothing but our input voltage so here r1 and r3 resistance to be connected in series so you can directly add the value and you can take a another arm i2 equal to i4 because here I1 equal to I3. Here you can take I2 equal to I4. So you can take this arm and I2 equal to I4 and here the same value I2 equal to I4. Here it is equal to V divided by R2. Remaining two resistance R2 plus R4. So you can consider that this equation is 1 and this equation number 2 and this equation number 3 and substitute the equation number 2 and 3 in equation number 1. So here I1 value is there and I2 value is there and equal that the I1 and I2 value is available here. We can find out the value of I1 and I2 here. And these two values to be kept substitute in the equation number 1. And here I1 R1 equal to I2 R2. So here I1 is replaced by V1 V divided by R1 plus R3 into R1. Okay. And here I2 is replaced by here is I2 is there. I2 is replaced by V divided by R2 plus R4 into R2. So here we voltage source because here the same voltage source here also same voltage source equal to it is a we have to uh, omit that and here the value is R1 divided by R1 plus R3 and R2 divided by R2 plus R4. Just you have to cross multiply that. Okay, then only we have to find out the unknown voltage source because in the circuit I am not telling that value because here R4 is the unknown resistance value. R4 is the unknown resistor. R1, R2, R3 is the unknown resistance because the three resistance are known by user. R4 is unknown value. So we have to find out the value of R4. So just we have to equate the equation and just you have to cross multiply that okay so cross multiply that so r1 into r2 plus r4 r1 into r2 plus r4 here r2 into r1 plus r3 just we can multiply that r1 into r2 r1 r2 r1 into r4 r1 r4 equal to r2 r1 and r2 r3 so <coughs> here r1 r2 here r1 r2 so both are cancelled here R1, R4 is there. Here R2, R3 is there. So R1, R4, R2, R3. So we need R4 because it is an unknown value. So R4 is there and the R1 is comes to denominator here. So the value of unknown resistance R4 is equivalent to R2, R3 divided by R1. So you can substitute the value here because R2, R3, R1, these three resistance are known value. You can substitute here and you can find the R4 value only when the bridge is balanced. Okay, because there is no current flow through the galvanometer. At that time only you have to find out the unknown resistance R4 equal to R1, R2, R3 divided by R1. So here R1, R2 is a ratio arm and R3 is a standard arm. 
these three values are already known by ourselves so we can easily find out the unknown value and what is the major advantages of uh, wheatstone bridge means wheatstone bridge with kelvin warley slide is used to for the reduction of errors with arises due to the switch contact so this type of uh, wheatstone bridge is used to for to measure the uh, unknown value without error without making error and uh, some other techniques or uh, some other methods also used available kelvin warley slide method so both are wheatson bridge and this method also more or less the same and it can be used for to reduce the reduction in error okay so we have to find out the unknown resistance value with exact exact one and the temperature effects can be reduced to negligible proportion okay so the, there is no temperature will be will not be affected because we can do the experiment in room temperature okay because we are using a ohm's law formula ohm's, ohm's law formula is nothing but uh, it's a constant temperature is a major important thing okay that means we have to maintain the constant uh, temperature uh, that means room temperature <coughs> okay so the temperature effects can be reduced the Reduce to negligible proportion. Okay, it is a negligible one, so we are we can't able to uh, consider the uh, temperature. So maybe it will give a proper output. The errors may be reduced to as low value. Maybe it is a <coughs> what is the error ratio? Means point one ppm per particle per minute. Okay, maybe uh, the temperature with respect to temperature. Okay, the error is very very minimum. The ratio is point one plus or minus point one, okay. And the Kelvin Warley slide wire is used to replace the simple slide wire uh, because it gives greater accuracy. Okay, that means uh, we are using. So here we are using the we are finding unknown resistance value. Maybe uh, if any maybe the circuit is unbalanced means okay if balanced means there is no problem uh, we can easily find out the value if any, if any unbalanced condition means you can adjust any resistance okay you can adjust any these three resistance okay it is a, anyone having a variable resistance you can adjust the resistance maybe the current flowing through the galvanometer goes to zero so you can uh, the warly uh, slide wire resistance nothing but adjustable resistance okay should be placed in any arm resistance arm so it should be used to to uh, easily to get a balanced one and what is the limitation okay some limitations is there for which stone bridge what is the limitation mean for low resistance measurements the resistance of the leads and contacts become significant and produces an error because uh, it is a resistance and this is a resistance value and the resin should be having connected with some contact okay some metal part is there that metal part also including added to the circuit okay this it is a main reason okay because we got to measure the low resistance value some metal parts also connected to the resistance that resistance value also included that so you have to avoid that you have to measure the exact resistance value okay so for low resistance measurement the resistance of the leads and contacts become significant and produce error array the contact is nothing but the metal part that metal part should be connected the resistance for external purpose that metal part also having some resistance value that is also to be calculated or should be added into your original value so some value will be differ so you have to find the exact value of resistance between the actual resistance material only okay so that is the main uh, drawback and while the current flowing through the wheatstone bridge resistance the heating effect will be produced it will further produces a change in the resistance value so when the current flowing through resistance the resistance properties is nothing but it will be create the heat okay the voltage and current will be dropped in resistance it should be eliminated in the form of heat so the heat will be formed around the resistance so that heat will be affected the the resistance value okay so that is a limitation so we have to uh, measure the so resistance value in the uh, normal room temperature with uh, proper air conditioning place okay so we, then only we have to measure the exact value and what is the major applications means and it is used for the measurement of uh, motor windings 
okay we have to measure the value of uh, motor winding uh, resistance transformer uh, winding resistance and solenoid valve and uh, relay circuit coil okay so that particular resistance okay that particular coil resistance will be calculated by uh, using uh, wheatstone bridge because uh, we are now we are know the value of uh, motor winding resistance okay but nowadays we are having different uh, measuring instruments there we, we are using uh, uh, megger uh, we are using megger is used for to measure the uh, earth resistance and to winding and multimeters okay multimeters are there that multimeter is used to measure the uh, any resistance okay any resin any coil any resistance value for the coil okay but nowadays very huge meters are there okay different meters are there and at initially okay <coughs> maybe i don't know what i don't know how a meter how i can find found out that so we i am using construct the bridge circuit and i have easily find out the value of res unknown resistance value and like a motor winding resistance transformer solenoid relay coil or anything any other coil also okay and it is also used to use in telephone companies to locate the cable fault so maybe the telephone cables nowadays we have they have to erecting the underground cable okay so maybe the cable will be affect the fault okay maybe the cable will be uh, discontinued in between the underground mean just we have to find out the value of the based on that value of the resistance because the total length of the value having uh, some resistance value it initially we have to calculate maybe the conductor will be broken or maybe the conductor will be discontinued in the particular area mean so we have to find out the distance between the starting point and the fault occur point so there is a separate circuit is there but in our syllabus it is not available but we are using the cable fault using bridges okay murray loop test and warley loop test and different that is uh, there okay the same concept will be adapted find out the uh, uh, fault occur between the uh, underground cable so it is also possible so these are all the uh, simple applications for bridges okay like a uh, wheatstone bridges okay i think uh, you have to easily understand the concept of bridges and uh, bridges to be classified into two types ac and dc bridges and we have to discuss in dc bridges first and dc bridges uh, having the three different uh, types in our syllabus and wheatstone kelvin and kelvin double bridge so now we have to discuss in detail with wheatstone bridge okay that's all for the session okay con loan